Thank you. Uh, before we start, let's take a quick group selfie so I can get, get all you guys in this. <laughs> all right, uh, look your best. Put your arms up or something. Awesome. So let's talk about shipping to production with React Native and Next.js. So my name is Fernando Rojo, and like they mentioned, I'm the co-founder and CTO at Beekig. So we're a marketplace for booking artists. You can think of it like Airbnb for live music. Our product is live in production and processing millions of dollars worth of bookings. We have a website and we have an app, but we don't have a web team and a native team and a design team. In fact, we don't have a front end team at all. The front end for the website and the native app was built and designed by one person with one code base. And that's all thanks to using React Native with Next.js. I first spoke about React Native with Next.js at NextConf in 2021. Some of you might have seen that. And in that talk, I discussed the many challenges I faced, including navigation, animations, responsive design systems, platform-specific features, and monorepos. And I walked through how I built a few libraries to solve the problems, such as Dripsy, Modi, Solito. Uh, looks like one of them might be missing. Maybe you'll find out at the end of the talk. And the reception of the talk surprised me a bit. I thought that React Native with Next.js would be pretty niche, but it turns out that there is a real appetite among React developers to be less constrained when shipping product. And little by little, a sizable community started growing around the stack. Could it be that the promise of cross-platform without compromising user experience or avoiding the best frameworks like Next.js was finally coming true? People started trying it out, and there was a lot of excitement. But there was a pretty big elephant in the room. How do I handle navigation? My DMs were flooded with this question. All over GitHub, everyone's asking, how do I do this? And navigation is by far the hardest part of cross-platform development. So in my next talk, I discussed a library I made called Expo Next React Navigation. And as the name implies, this library lets you share code between Expo and Next.js with React Navigation on the native side. So why were people still getting stuck? The reality is that the APIs offered by this library were pretty bad and didn't solve the issue. So this is what it looked like to use Expo Next React Navigation. And you can already see, like, where is this taking you? On native, we have a route name. And on web, we have a path. And these might not match. And it's just pretty unclear where you're going to end up from this. The difference in abstractions between screen names and URLs is already enough to confuse you. Next.js uses a pages folder with file system routing, whereas React Navigation uses component-based stacks, tabs, drawers, and other forms of navigation that all go through a single app.tsx file. And overall, web and native just have very different patterns. And a key component of the library that was missing was just documenting how you should deal with these. So if you go down the rabbit hole, you'll find that uh, I worked with Axel and a lot of other people on a pull request in an example app trying to solve this problem for months, basically from November when I gave the talk until the day I released Salido. And here at the top, you can see a comment from someone who saw the talk, was really excited, they had a web development background, and the first thing they're wondering is like, how do I get navigation working? And this slowly became one of those pull requests that had a ton of activity. After all, like the most basic thing of any product, just like how do you get from screen to screen, remained very unclear. And it's useful to take a step back here for a second. Previous attempts at sharing code between web and native have made you share too much, resulting in apps that look like websites or websites that look like apps. And so this is why cross-platform over time has gotten a bad reputation. And that's a trap I wanted to avoid. I wanted each platform to look and feel natural while still sharing the underlying screens that should look the same no matter where they are. And this, this required abstracting at the right level. And eventually, we figured it out. And the result is a library called Salido, which I guess has been mentioned a few times now. I was hoping it would be a bit more uh, climactic here. But uh, Salido lets you share navigation code across React Native and Next.js with the exact same API. It uses Next Router on web and React Navigation on native, and it never crosses over between the two. So you ne you're never importing next code on native or vice versa. And this is all possible thanks to a recent feature in the last few years from React Navigation with a great linking config. 
So all of your linking on the native side is handled with a single variable. Solido has the same API as Next.js, so if you've ever used link or used router from Next.js, this will look uh, very familiar. Since most people here obviously use React Native, you're probably used to using something like navigation.navigate with a screen name. Solido replaces that altogether and forces you to always use URLs. And using URLs instead of screen names is much more scalable. It creates a strict contract between developers and users that over time you're forced to stick to. Stick to. It also makes features like deep linking just work out of the box when you want to you know, map your web URLs to your native URLs. And finally, the problem of cross-platform navigation was solved. So let's get into what Solido does and purposefully doesn't do. Solido intentionally has a very limited scope. Give it a URL, it detects what platform you're on, and it will make sure you get to the right screen. And a key part of, of Solido is documenting the recommended patterns and app structure when building with Expo and Next.js. This is one of the key things that's come up over time. It's the, the code isn't really the hard part, it's just knowing the right structure and what to do. And so since we've been doing this for a few years at BKIG, that's what I've been trying to share in the docs. And over time, I'm gonna be adding more elaborate examples and guides to the Solido, Solido website. The API provides three things. First, a set of link components. So there's a text link, a Modi link, and just a basic link. A use param hook, which replaces uh, use route from React Navigation. What's really cool about this is it looks just like use state, but it lets you use your query parameters on web and just your screen parameters on native to update state. And finally, you get a use router hook, which you know, lets you push and replace screens with URLs. Now, what's important to note about Solido is that it doesn't concern itself with how you render your screens. It views your screens as your app's primitives, but it's up to your app and website to render these however you want. You can use tabs, stacks, drawers, a modal, whatever you want. You're not constrained at all. It doesn't involve itself with how it actually looks. As long as each screen points to your URL, it works with Solido. So oftentimes when someone releases a new library, like I've been getting asked, like, will this work with Solido? And it's not really even a question you have to ask. If it, if it works with React Native, it works with Solido. This makes it easy to keep your website looking like a website and your app feeling like an app. They share the same screens, but the outer layout and navigation implementation is up to the platform itself. Setting up a mono repo with React Native and Next.js is a pretty big pain, so Solido comes with a script to solve this for you. You just run this and you have a fully configured mono repo with an expo entry point, a next entry point, and all the shared navigation. And over time, we're gonna be adding a lot uh, a lot of more examples. One that I'm super excited about is this uh, Tailwind CSS React Native one. Uh, Mark Lawler has been working on a really exciting library that lets you use pure CSS on web for Tailwind, and then build time takes strings into style objects on the native side. So I think this is gonna be really cool for anyone who's you know, used to using Tailwind. So uh, just to kind of recap the lesson I learned building Solido, here we have the Beakig mobile website on the, on the left and the iPhone app on the right. Notice that the screen looks the same, but if you look around the edges, you'll notice some differences. The navigation sort of layout is very platform specific, and, and that's by design. And this is what Solido lets you do. It lets your users get the experience they expect on each platform. And that's the beauty of abstracting with URLs and not using pre-built opinionated UI on web. While that might be good for native, on a website, you really want to customize everything from the header to the menus that pop out. And I learned a weird lesson here. It took me years to realize that this was the right approach, but it took me like four hours to write the initial code. Like if you open the Solido library and you just look through it, like it's, it's super basic. It's just a few components, a few hooks, and that's it. And for over a year, I was just abstracting at the wrong level. And the best answer turned out to be the simplest one by far. So when you're solving cross-platform problems, it's important to Focus on finding the right abstraction and embrace the things that each platform already offers rather than trying to overfit one to another. I'm gonna to totally switch gears here and talk about menus. So here we have Windows 95, and since the dawn of time, every UI has had menus. This was literally like almost 30 years ago. And yet, I've always found menus to be a big pain point in React Native. If you wanted to create a menu in React Native, how would you do? You would probably set up some Boolean to track state to see if it's open. 
and you would then have to measure the location of a pressable and put it under it, or you just absolute position it under it whenever it's open. But let's say you want to do some more complicated things like uh, you want to be able to tap outside of the menu to close it. So that doesn't work necessarily on native. You can't set like a global listener when you click outside of something like you could on web. So you'd probably have to set up a modal now, right? You put a, put a modal and it kind of has a transparent background and you can just tap the back of that and that'll close the menu. The problem is, for starters, iOS only allows one modal at a time with React Native. So if you ever already have one open elsewhere, that could cause some problems. And you're also having to track state. So you also now have to measure the position of the trigger, of the button that triggered it, and then you have to measure the size of the menu. And let's say it doesn't fit on the screen, you have to move it accordingly. Many issues like that. And so even if you solved all of that, you're still left with issues like animations, um, Android back button support, just the many accessibility problems. And if clicking a menu item does something like sort a list, you're probably gonna get, a, gonna get a frame drop when it closes. And so by this point, it's probably pretty clear why there isn't a leading menu library in React Native, even though you know, we had this way back in the day. And so I've been putting a lot of thought into this and wondering, like, given that menus are already so hard in React Native, would it be possible to make a menu for web, iOS, and Android that works in React Native? It's already a bit too hard to do you know, on, on one platform, but maybe it'd be easier if we tried to do it for all of them. So for the last few months, I've been working on an experiment. What if this menu problem could be solved once and for all? And I focus on two key questions here. First, what is the ideal API for a menu? And second, what should users experience? For the ideal API, I set on Radix UI. I think it's just like super elegant, very easy to use, very composable. So I made it my goal to use Radix as the API and figure out the rest from there. Since this only works on web, I needed to find a suitable implement implementation for iOS and Android. And this is where, historically, when people build cross-platform frameworks and, and apps, they get a bit tripped up. The goal is not to share everything. If all you want to do is share code, you can just put your website in a web view, and you're good to go. But your users don't care what your stack is. They just want a good product. So while Radix is the best option for menus on web, both from an API and implementation standpoint, I decided to use true native menu components on iOS and Android. It's important to build with a single unified API, but the output to users doesn't have to be the same everywhere they are. And so today, I'm ex introducing an experimental library called Zigo for building menus with React Native and React Native Web. Zigo lets you use the same API as Radix UI. Under the hood, it will create the best menu experience for end users, depending on the platform that they're using. The menus themselves will not look the same across platforms, and that is by design. We want to leverage the best that each platform has to offer. So on iOS, it'll be a native iOS menu. I'm also gonna be adding a context menu so you can hold down on something and it kind of shows the elements, iMessage style, with you know, op options below it. You'll be able to do checkboxes, dangerous actions, things like that. And on Android, I'm, we're still working on the native side, uh, so currently it's just a JavaScript-based implementation for the meantime, but it will also be using the, the native menus on Android. So this, while this is uh, still pretty early, don't even have like a full doc site set up like I like to in general and stuff like that, uh, you, you can start using it now. And you know, keep in mind that it's uh, first release, but, um, and I'm gonna be adding more components over time, hopefully a popover and tooltip and things like that. On, on native, those are just gonna you know, render the same thing, whereas on web, you'll be able to um, interact with it with hover states. But this has already been in production on the BKIG website and app for some time. So in my experience, it's a bit battle tested and it's, been, uh, it's working great. And it will work with Expo, as long as you use a custom dev client. But as we learned yesterday, there's no more ejecting. So you will not have to eject to use this with Expo. And that is all I have. So if you wanna stay updated with what I'm working on, you can follow me on Twitter. It's probably the easiest way. And if you want to learn more about the open source stuff that, that we're building at BeeGig and, and be part of you know, the, the growth that we have as a company, um, you know, we are looking to hire some, some fantastic people. So feel free to shoot me a DM or find me later this, uh, during the, uh, today during the conference. And I think that that is all. Thanks so much.